Hey guys, it's me, Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about the type of tutors you should never have. So I would say that these days, majority of students do have tutors, whether it's just that one tutor for their weaker subject or tutors across all of their subjects, you guys are going to be looking for tutors at a certain stage, whether it's going to year 11 or year 12, or even earlier than that. And it gets so hard because there are so many tutors out there. And how do you know if the one tutor that you are going to hire is going to be that perfect tutor for you to really help you strive for your goals and excel in that particular subject. It's hard because more often than not, tutors are online these days and they give you a little blurb about themselves and then that's pretty much it. That's the only basis you've got and then you ask them for a starting session and then you just go from there. So I want to make a series of videos about tutors just because I've been on both ends. I've been a student myself and so I've had several tutors in the past and I've had my fair share of some great tutors but also some not so good ones. And now that I've finished school, I'm on the other side. I'm a tutor now. And so I've seen over the years what students are looking for, what they're happy with, and also what they're not so happy with. So if you like the advice that I give you throughout this video, please give it a thumbs up so that I know that I should be making more about tutors. And so that way you guys can hopefully have a really good guide as to what you should look out for, but also what you shouldn't look out for in tutors. And the latter half is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. The examples I'm going to give you today are going to be English based since all of you are studying a particular type of English, but definitely feel free to apply all the advice I give you today to other subjects as well, because I'm sure that the content you learn here is applicable to any of those subjects, really. First thing is a tutor who thinks that they're better than you. So you're probably asking me, hey Lisa, don't I want a tutor who's better than me? I mean, they're supposed to be specialized in that particular subject and they're supposed to know heaps about it and that's what I want, right? Well, yes, of course that's what you want, but I'm talking about something else a little different. What I'm talking about here are tutors who behave in a more superior way and also in a condescending way towards their students. I've had students come to me where they tell me how their tutor in the past, you know, has one particular view of a text and that's it. And if you don't agree, well, then you're wrong. But that's not what English is about. English is all about encouraging different perspectives on a text and encouraging different interpretations of a particular character or a particular idea. And that's pretty much the beauty of English, the fact that it's so open. And I know that for some of you, you actually don't like English because of this, because there are no boundaries, there are no right and wrongs, but try to see it from this other side where you can push yourself to the limits and no one's going to stop you and your tutor definitely shouldn't be stopping you. If you've got a tutor who is not open-minded, they only see things their own way and they think that they're better than you in that their knowledge is the one and only way and that's pretty much about it. That is definitely mm. warning sign. Second one, a tutor to help you write your essays. Okay, so again, you're probably like, hey, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little story about my literature tutor when I was in year 11. Yes, I had a literature tutor and no, I did not do well in it in the end, but there is a moral to this story. So let's just call her <coughs> Margaret. So I was pretty happy with my tutor. I thought she was pretty good and she was really intelligent and she knew heaps about the text that I was studying. Then one day came where she was like, okay, I'm going to write up an essay for you and then you can have it afterwards. And I thought, oh my gosh, fantastic. I'm going to have more resources to help with my studying because at that time she was never really one to give you that many sample essays. So she actually drove all the way to my school um, in order to give me this essay, um, just a random day throughout the week that wasn't our tutoring session. And I don't know why she just didn't wait for our tutoring session, but yeah, she came all the way to my school. And so I met her in the parking lot, which sounds really dodgy, but anyway, so I met her in the parking lot got in her car and she handed me the essay. And I said, thank you so much. I'm going to really have a look at this and try to improve my literature writing. And I was about to leave the car and she goes, is that it? And I was thinking, what, <laughs> what? And she goes, that's going to be $60 because that's how much I paid her 
per hour for the session. And I was flabbergasted. I didn't know what to do. And when I was younger, I was quite shy and a little bit more reserved towards elders. So I kept my shock in and I just gave her the money that was in my wallet that I had saved up for all my lunches and the food that I was going to buy for the rest of the week. So it was pretty sad. I kind of wish I stood up for myself and said, wait a second, I don't want your essay if I have to buy it. Am I buying your allowance for me to plagiarize you? Like, I just didn't really understand what was going on. So anyways, that was that. And then she pretty much said to me, you know, just write this for your sack and I'm sure you're going to do just fine. For me, I've always been really proud of my work. I'm the type of person where if I do well, I'm, it's, go it's going to really boost my confidence and I'm going to be proud of what I've done because it's, it's come from me. It's not because of someone else that I've done well, but it's, it's all here, okay? So I, I had a read of her essay and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to write my own essay because that's what I was planning to do anyway. And then I'm going to show my teacher my tutor's essay and then just get an idea of what she thinks. So I did my sack and then that was that. And then later on, I showed my teacher my tutor's essay. I didn't say it was my tutor's essay, but I just said, hey, this is an essay I have. Can you have a look at it? And you know what's really funny? I got an A, which I was so happy with because it was completely unexpected because I had read my tutor's essay and it was just sensational. It was full of all these big vocabulary points. There's a whole paragraph that I didn't even understand just because I was 16 at the time and it was just, you know, the ideas were just too big for me to really comprehend. So I was really, really happy. Um, I was, I was amazed. And so then when I gave in my tutor's essay, guess what? My teacher came back to me and she said, this is a B essay. And I was like, what? Say what? Um, I was really shocked again, but I was like, hang on a minute. This is my tutor's work. And yet she, she didn't get a mark as high as mine. How could that be? And then I realized it's because I knew what the requirements of the SAC were. So I wrote my essay in compliance with what they required of me in the SAC. Whereas her essay was just great but it wasn't what I needed. And so what I learned from that was that one, don't plagiarize. And if you don't plagiarize, often good things will come back to you just like it did for me. And after that, I pretty much just kicked her out because I was like, you know what? I don't want to have a tutor who encourages me just to steal her work and just to present it as mine. Because what, is, what does that say about me as a person? But also secondly, how is that going to help me in my final exam? It's not going to because by that stage, all you have are memorized portions of someone else's essay and you're not really going to develop the skills in order to write a really in-depth and insightful essay and you're not going to have that comprehensive knowledge that you gain by writing your own essays. So I am completely against plagiarism and I know like plagiarism Everyone knows it's a bad thing, but people still do do it. And all I can say to you is that if you plagiarize, you're not really doing yourself any good because your tutor is not going to be there in your sacks and in your exams. So it is a huge warning sign. Don't take on board these tutors. Instead, you want a tutor who is really there to help you, to help you generate and garner those skills that you need so that you can write these complex and amazing essays so that you can have a really powerful understanding of the text. That's what a tutor is supposed to do. You want a tutor who's going to drive you in the right direction, but if you're going to plagiarize, going the wrong way, bro. Third thing, and this is definitely applicable to English, but it's if the tutor doesn't read your text, Oh my gosh, I get really frustrated when students come to me and they've had English tutors in the past and they tell me that their tutor didn't read their text or didn't know anything about their text. Cause it's just like, how is your tutor supposed to help you if they haven't read your book? How are they supposed to break down those prompts with you? How are they supposed to show you the way that the author uses metaphors or alliteration? How are they supposed to show you how to write a damn essay about this particular text. I think that is a massive no-no and you know that a tutor is going to be good for you if 
They haven't read the text, yet they say to you, you know what, don't worry about it. I'm going to read it before we start it so that I've got really strong knowledge in this text and I'm going to be able to guide you from there. And you know, not reading a text just because they're busy is absolutely not an excuse. This year I tutored about 20 or so students and it was the first year that I started doing full-time tutoring. So each of these students, they're all studying their individual four texts. So I had to read about 20 texts all in the first couple of months while teaching. And you know what? I did it. It was really hard work and I was constantly reading, but I knew that this was important to my students and I knew that I wouldn't be the best tutor that I could possibly be if I didn't read their text. And this is the same when it comes to any other subject because let's just even say for biology or psychology, courses are constantly changing. And if you want a good tutor, the tutor is the type of person who will always be up to date. No matter what, they won't let themselves go and just only know what they knew back in school, but they will ensure for you and to guarantee you that they will know absolutely everything that is required of you in your course. And that's it. <laughs> so I'm currently editing my work right now and I realized that I had actually deleted the rest of that video with me explaining more stuff about things that you should look out for in tutors. But anyways, that's okay because the video was getting a little bit long. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up for me if you want to see more about this, uh, especially since I cut out some of the advice that I gave you. So I definitely have more in store for you guys later on. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and comment below if there's anything you want me to talk about in the future. And I'll see you guys later. Bye! When I got my study score, I was really upset. I was just bawling. Um, let's just say that I got less than 30.